I just want to tell you that I'm Father Jose Robles Sanchez. Uh, I was born in Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, we are like rice and beans. We are everywhere, no? <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I was uh, born May 11 on Mother Day. Uh, I was the gift to my mother. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> But I have a secret. Uh, when I was born, I only weighed three pounds, four ounces. If you multiply by a hundred, then you find out my weight now. <laughs> Basically, uh, what I say to you is that I was a miracle because the doctor said, just go home and he's going to die. But a doctor he didn't have no children at all. And uh, he was pretty much at the age that his wife couldn't have any children. And he decided to stay with me next to my bed until I was able to do something for myself. And it was eight long months where he was there. Two months after they released me for the hospital, he received two children from Australia that he adopted, Antonio and Jose. I just want you to be aware, he was twins, uh, I just want to be aware that Antonio and I studied together since first grade all the way to high school, and I never knew that that was the children of the doctor. Never. And when I was ordained priest, Dr. Lenz was there, Antonio Jose was there, and I said, I know these guys. <laughs> and that's how I found out where the doctor received a blessing in his life. Mama received a blessing. And I received a blessing and being honored to be with his children all my education process. Today we celebrate the feast of Mount Carmel, our lady Mount Carmel. We all have a scapulary everywhere. I have a scapulary that I put there. My mama put it right there for me. And it's still there with me for the rest of my life. And basically what the devotion of our lady Mount Carmel gives us is something very simple. We are going to wear scapular not because we are superstitious, because we have faith. That is a reminder that we are committed to Christ. That we trust the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary for us to her son. And at the same time, her prayers help us day by day. To be able to show us the mercy of God and the love that God got for us forever. In Spanish, we use the word detente. Detente is stopper. And basically, it's good to know that concept because the whole purpose is that if we are in the near occasion of sins, and I look at my scapular, I say, I don't want to do that. I want to fight it. And that's why the scapular is in your front and it's in the back, and you have it right there. And hopefully, this little stuff that we call religious article would help us to, us to be focused and help us to be able to put God first in our life so we can be able to have a commitment life forever. How can we do that? The only way that we can do that is if we imitate Christ in being meek and humble. If we are willing to seek Christ in a true way and be meek and humble of heart, we be able to seek the will of God in love, in mercy, in an authentic reaction to life. That means uh, if we seek 
Christ as a meek and humble in heart, we will not respond to mama in a sassy way. We're not. Yeah, we will not say, yeah, right. Uh uh. We will not mistreat a friend and bully him all the way till he had to a point that he wanted to take his life. We would not offer alcohol or drugs to anybody. Why? Because we must understand that love goes above all things. And be trying to put somebody in the corner being bullied is not love. Be able to offer alcohol or drugs to somebody is not love. To be a cheater and come at the last minute to school and copy all the assignments for the rest of life is not love. It's not authentic life. That means it requires for us to be able to put God first in your life, in my life, in our life, so we can be able to live in the presence of God in so authentic way that every step that we do in life leads us only to one thing, Christ himself. How I propose to you to do it. For me, it's very easy. Because right now I'm saying Mass. Okay? It's right now uh, 9.32. That means I had to be holy to say Mass again tomorrow until 10.30. You got it? It's only 24 hours that I had to be holy. You got it? <laughs> you got it? Just 24 hours. But the problem is... The more probably some of you come on Sunday, okay? And then after that, you have to walk all the way in holiness till Sunday. <laughs> By Thursday, you're tired. By Friday, you're tired. <laughs> and then finally, in the process, you make a big mistake. And then you say, now I go into communion or not? Being holy is a matter of commitment, and I believe making short commitment will be easy that in the long run. If you go to Mass Sunday to Sunday, what I propose to you is that put a Mass on Wednesday, and only you have to be holy until Wednesday. <laughs> and then from this Wednesday, you have to be holy until some Saturday or Sunday. It's easy because we get conscious, really, that we are called to be holy every day. But at the same time, we have the incentive that on Wednesday, we're going to receive Christ again. And he's going to help us and give us a boost to be able to be in grace all the way till Sunday. We are called to be holy. We are called to make a difference in my life first. And when I follow that difference in my life first, I can be able to inspire others and I'll be able to help others to seek this holiness process. Let me uh, share this with you guys. Being holy is one of the most simple things that we can do. You know why? Because we are not alone. Christ is with us. Christ is our partner. And Christ is stick with you right there as you walk day by day. It's easier. To commit a sin is difficult. Because number one, you have to commit it and after that you have to lie and you have to cover it. And after you covered it, and after the devil tempted, he abandoned you and you despair. And your life gets to a mess, and then you have to say a lie to cover this lie, and this lie to cover this one. And at the end of the time, you don't remember what you did, and you remember what you're going to do in your life. That means live a holiness life is simple, because I know that I have behaving right here, and I'm going to behave here, and I'm going to behave here. And the same story it is for my life. Because the fact is that I need to be in grace to be able to stand here in front of you to celebrate this Mass. And for me, the Eucharist is the biggest challenge and is the biggest strength that I need 
to be able to pursue that walk of being holy. And that's why I say to you that as we celebrate our Lady Moon Carmel, she's a perfect example of that law. She walked with Christ from the very beginning all the end. From the manger all the way to the cross and to the resurrection. And when you have the grace of Mary next to you, and you have the commitment of pursue holiness, in a step by step, your life gets such a way that you don't have to worry about creating anything because there is only one truth. I follow Christ with my mind, with my soul, and with my heart. And no matter what question they ask me, the response will be the same because I don't need to create a story. I don't need to create a lie to fit. I don't need to create a story to make me look big. I don't need to do anything like that just to say I love Christ and I follow him with all my heart, with all my mind, and all my soul. Then how can we do this? Yesterday we went to the examination of concepts, but I have a few points for you. Number one, the fact that Christ was humble and the fact that Christ didn't want to deal with certain stuff and he chose to go to the desert and he chose to hide and he chose to have peace, that don't mean that he is loser. What it means is that as a true God, he knows what is better for us. And sometimes he chooses to talk, and sometimes he chooses not to. And that should be enough to teach us that in humbleness, we can find holiness. And when you humble yourself, you have to allow God to exalt you and give us the peace that you need to be able to live a life. When you walk in holiness, you choose to wait to have sex with your girlfriend or with your boyfriend. You postpone that decision because in holiness, that is no part of the plan that God had for you. In holiness, you choose to receive an education to be somebody in the future where you can not only be a provider for your kids, or be able to provide for your family and for your wife. But you have an identity that God gave you this gift for you to in holiness pursue it and have a life in him. Because I believe that if God called you to be a doctor, God called you and he will give you the gift that you need to be a doctor. If God called you to be a teacher, he will give you the gift that you need to be a teacher. I mean, what I'm proposing to you is not a plan of a weekend. I went to confession, I'm high, I'm holy, mama, it was great. But on Tuesday, they're going to say, ah, leave me alone. No. What I'm proposing to you is a plan that not going to be in here for a weekend, that is going to stick with you for the rest of your life. And you'll be able to walk the walk in the right way. Why? Because God is your partner. God is in your side to take you to a call where you pursue holiness and your life is stable, holy, good. And at the same time, you're building community. That is the last element here. Yes, what I learned about God, I have three brother priests that we met every Wednesday and we share. What I learned in the office of the reading in the morning, we share with the seminarian in the morning and say, how was the office for you this morning? How was the morning prayer for you this morning? And then in breakfast, we talk. Why? Because the word of God is to be proclaimed. And when you share, you bring some insight for others. There are three fundamental things that you always can do. Sacrament. Pursue love and be humble. And in the church, Catholic church, is only one way. And that's sacrament. Look at how simple it is. 
when you was born and you was cute? I don't know about you, but I was cute. <laughs> yeah, I have a picture. I should have brought it and put it on the screen. <laughs> when you was born and you was cute, the church received you with what? Baptism. And you was baptized and it was a great moment in your life. When you get to know the age of reason, you know what I mean, that age. When you are a leader and you threw water in the... In the floor, you look at your mama and you smile. <laughs> and your mama say you're cute. But when you're seven or eight, when you threw the water, because you know what's wrong, you go and hide. <laughs> you got the difference? That means here, I didn't know what is right or wrong, but at seven and eight, I know what is right or wrong. That's why you go to confession and you receive first communion. You got it? There's a step. Then after that, you get to be 18, you know, I'm a big guy, you know, I know what to do, I don't want to sell, but then, since you know, they say, you're going to get ready to be confirmed and receive the infuse of the Holy Spirit, receive all the gifts. Right there. And then after that, you feel that you're cuter than the whole world. <laughs> yeah. And you want to find that girlfriend or that boyfriend, you're going to go like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then you're going to say, I love you for the rest of my life. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> and then you choose to be married. Or you choose to become a priest. Or you can choose to be a sister. Why not? And then after that, when life gets tough, when life gets tough, God is there with you at the moment of death. My God is faithful from you as a baby all the way that you're dying. He been with you from there to here. You are loved by him. He wants you. He wants to pursue you. He wants to give you a chance. He wants to give you graces and the sacrament for you to be transformed. Let's begin here today, be transformed by the grace and the power of God, going to confession and doing what it takes for your life to be new. And after that, follow what well, we must follow, the way of holiness in the Catholic Church, the sacrament, because we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have one, and it work is come from God and is given to us through all his love. Guys, girls, let's do it in a true way, and let's go and change the world of hatred, of abuse, of attacks, and be able to transform in a peaceful one that only belong to God. A kingdom of peace, a kingdom of love, and a kingdom of forgiveness. God bless you.